Hello everybody and welcome to Talking Teal, Season 5, Episode 10. I'm Leon Cohen. And I'm Mimi Torchin. And we're Lady Parts TV. And this, I think, will be a slightly different Talking Teal from uh, uh, all the other ones because uh, we're, reaching, we're reaching, reaching a point. We're reaching a point um, where there are only two episodes to go. Wow. And uh, I think uh, certain things that we kept saying, we're going to wait to see how they develop. Uh, I think we've waited. I yeah, think, I there's think it's not much safe. chance for there to be much more. I mean, I'm sure as soon as we say that, of course, something major will happen. It doesn't but, matter. Uh, but the point is, it doesn't matter at this point because yeah. you can't waste the whole season just for the sake of the last uh -huh. episode. Um, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's uh, let's get started. This episode was uh, directed by Catherine Millar again, written by Marcia, Marcia Gardner. So um, very. Female heavy, as we yes, like. unfortunately, since <laughs> unfortunately. hated well, almost every second of the episode. <laughs> I, I like I like some of the dialogue. The story is the story, and everybody writes it together. But in terms of the dialogue, I thought the dialogue was pretty good. Yeah. Um, Camille and Denise, you were the only ones who actually wrote that you loved this episode. <laughs> What and drugs are you girls on? I like some. <laughs> oh, Denise! If you read Denise's email, Denise, I love you. And ever the optimist and ever the benefit of the doubt giver. Uh, Denise thinks, uh, well, I'll say, I'll say what Denise thinks in a minute, but all of you, all of you, no matter how you felt about this episode, loved three things. Uh, Frankie and Boomer, uh, Sarah actually called it when Frankie met Susan, which I thought was really brilliant. Um, Frigid, of course. And Frankie and Kim, some of you also named Will and Kaz. Now, Denise said that all of the ridiculous writing throughout the season was all meant to lead us to this, these three things. Frankie and Boomer had a great scene, and Frigid are reunited, and, you know... That's pathetic. It, it is. It, it is pathetic. It, it, <laughs> if if we've the, gone through all the shit we've gone through for just those to get tiny that. little <laughs> moments, then... That's pathetic. Not n n no reflection on you, darling yeah. Denise. You, you're really trying uh, to. You're really, really trying to, but, to give uh, them the benefit of the doubt. Uh, pathetic. Yeah. Yeah. No, and and it's. I, I'm not buying that. And 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 if it were the case, it would be pathetic. Yeah. pathetic. Um, however, uh, the thing is, uh, even these three things: uh, Frankie and Boomer, Frankie and Bridget, and Frankie and Kim. We're not all that to be joyous about, and I will tell you why. So let's start, okay? No, yes. Uh, no, yes. No, yes. yes. No, I'll tell you uh, specific reasons, but let, let's talk about this episode. And this is this is how bad this is getting, that I don't feel that in this talking to you, and this is why I said it would be different, I don't feel that there's anything to analyze or anything to try to figure out or anything to try to get ahead of the writers in, you know, what's going to happen, because... We've been doing this all season long, and guess what? Getting nowhere. Iman, Mike, and Frankie. How, how many weeks now have we been trying to come up with the craziest theories of what happened, why did it happen, how did it happen? Who done it? And then what? Two seconds, we get a wrap of what happened, and then the girl dies. By whom? The freak. Surprise! It all led to the freak anyway. Even though she wasn't involved, guess what? It was all a plot device for her storyline. I guess for the writers, everything is going as planned. <laughs> <laughs> um, kudos to uh, Doris and Kathy, whose crazy theories actually weren't that far off the mark. Um, but there were so many problems with that storyline. Even if we do just take it for what it is, there were so many problems. And let's just name a few. First of all, as usual, Ferguson is always in the right place, in the right time. With her gloves on. With her gloves on. That, first of all, how does she manage to get black gloves in the prison? I mean, is that such something you can buy at the commissary? I, I just don't think so. And, and then what? She just, I mean, I know it's her unit. I know Iman is in her unit. But still, that she just happens to be in the right place in the right time, ready to go with her gloves on. <laughs> Um, also, what did happen to that CCTV? What did happen to the cameras? If, if Especially because this was something that happened. It was uh, serendipitous. Right. It just happened. She happened to be there. Why would the cameras not be on? Why would she have her gloves? Uh, exactly. You know, why is it 
going as planned, and, unless and, that's just Vera she was talking about. Well, it, it was Vera, I'm sure, that she was talking about, because I think the only reason that she killed Iman, because let's face it, she has nothing to do with Frankie, the, as far as we all know. The only reason she killed her is because she wanted there to be another dead body so that well, Vera still, oh, would be yeah. demoted. But let's go back for a second to the CCTV. If she moved the camera again, well, then what's the fucking point of having a security system in this prison? If everybody can just move the camera and do whatever the fuck they want. Get a want. little broomstick. I mean, even if we don't think about it from the point of view of that's a shitty security camera, that's a shitty system that this prison has, and no prison, I think, at this point would have just kept that security uh, system knowing that everybody just does whatever they want with it. But just in terms of the dramatic writing, it's just so lazy. Every time you want to do something that you, they can't be... Uh, spotted doing, then they're just that it. That's that's all they need to do. And then what's the point of the, having them in prison? Well, there's only five guards anyway. So I mean, how can and, you and, take care and, of a whole? And uh, almost all of them are corrupt or on the take or trying to get drugs in. Or <laughs> that's the other thing. Everybody is corrupt in this system. Um, is for me, if I can just say this and get it out of the way. Get it out of the way. The thing about this uh, season that is that makes me not care is that there's nowhere to turn. Mm -hmm. At the top, the fish is rotten from the head. Channing is a corrupt son of a bitch. There's nowhere to turn. Uh, and Vera had wanted, no power because she has nowhere to turn. And not only is Channing corrupt, but, but Frigid has no secrets. So... He's in. She, he's under her uh, threat anyway. What do you she, mean? She knows, no. Oh, he knows her secret. Ferguson. Did I say Frigid? You said Frigid. Yeah. <laughs> I meant Ferguson. Oh, okay. Ferguson knows about the brothel. So he not only is he corrupt, but he's also under Ferguson. Ferguson can't be stopped, no matter what. And um, and you know what? You're, you're talking about the corruption. This goes far beyond the prison because this detective. She was practically laughing in Frankie's face, not doing any of exactly. her own investigation, just taking Ferguson for her word. Why? Because she's shown in the past that she How has trustworthy a... she yeah. is. <laughs> yes, I mean, you're doing. I mean, it's it's ridiculous. It it's absurd. Does nobody do their job? Nobody. Everybody is stupid or corrupt. Well, or I've decided that <laughs> Pamela Rabe has something on the writer. <laughs> <laughs> well. It better be good, because this is really, really bad. Um, also, Frankie going... I mean, okay, she's in Iman's cell. She finds the necklace. Iman comes in. So what? You're Again, showing your, her hand. Uh, showing her your hand. Telling her, oh, I know that you uh, you and Panisi knew each... Why? Why would you... She's obviously a dangerous person. Why would you just tell her that? Inviting she's her to emotional. attack you. And right now, oh, she it's was... bullshit. Frankie is smarter than that. Yes, but Frankie is on... An emotional this is lazy downslide. I, yes, it's just. Yeah, I agree with you because I always hate that. But I think at this point, Frankie is out of control, and uh, Frankie has been very calculated. Yeah, she hasn't been all that calculated uh, or calculating. Um, no. I think that uh, even though I think it's stupid, and I always think it's stupid, and say, "All right, I'm going right now to tell the police yeah, when exactly. someone has a, a, <laughs> yeah, you know, a gun in their it. hand or a knife." Um, <laughs> Yeah. Or like like Vera going to say, I'm calling the police now. This when the the thug comes. Uh, oh yeah, well, you know, yeah, yeah the, the drug dealer. Uh, another thing uh, that Rachel pointed out: Frankie in the past was a kick-ass, violent person. Everybody was afraid of her, and also even even Juicy Lucy when she was trying to attack Iman. Oh my God, Frankie is attacking! You know, coming to stop me. And all of a sudden with Iman, she's like, Oh, oh, don't kill me! Don't kill me! She's 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 not she wasn't up to her Frankie standard, which is again bullshit. Um, Iman and Panisi also were so close; they were so in love, and yet nobody knows that he has a girlfriend. They somehow managed to hide it. I mean, from people. yes, really. Would the cops not know something about this? No, they would said they no, be able to no, investigate. No, they said that the neighbors and the no no neighbor and no friend mentioned a girlfriend. Well, you know, they weren't hiding. Well, Mike doesn't go out a lot. Doesn't remember. matter. They could. All they needed to do, all a, a good detective does, they would have found out the connection that they were both going to the same support group. Uh, it, it should have been easy enough to track. If Frankie can do it from her prison by using Bridget, uh, then the detectives should have well, been... Well, we know the cops in... Uh, um, On TV shows, In, in Australia, just obviously suck. <laughs> um, also, uh, Iman was eating that gun after she killed Mike. 
excuse me, Frankie's DNA was on it, but Iman's wasn't, wasn't after it was in her mouth. Now, if you say that she cleaned it really well, then she should have cleaned Frankie's, Frankie's DNA off also. as well. Exactly. Um, also, uh, uh, Lauren says a very good point. So she kills Panisi because he's so obsessed with Frankie. And then she follows Frankie to jail. This is a girl who was in refugee camps and she will put herself in prison. She already framed her for his murder. What else does she need to do? Exactly. It's so crazy. It's such an outrageous story. Um, also, Sarah makes a good point. Uh, she said, to improve on that story, to make that story actually a story that I would care about, then you should have brought him onto the prison far earlier, made her be all nice, make friends with Frankie, well, make friends with everybody did. else. No, but we don't know her. We don't care about her. She's dead now. Did, she, did we care? No. No, yeah. we only care because she might have been able to help Frankie. Exactly. So... This whole storyline, she was, she was bare, basically, she was nothing. She was a plot device. She was there to move the plot in Ferguson's direction. Because not only did all of our trying to figure out what the story was about ended up amounting to nothing, it was very anticlimactic, but also it all led back to Ferguson. So I am just outra outraged. Talk about plot driving story as opposed to character driving story. This is, again, one of the prime examples of how you cannot sacrifice character on the altar of story. Oh, and they sacrificed all it the characters. It just completely ruins your investment in a show. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, if, if you can't trust anything, if, if the ground is constantly shifting under your feet, unless it's um, the leftovers or um, well, but that's a deep impact different. or <laughs> earthquake, yeah. the ground, you should be able to uh, have something to hang on to, something to believe in. Uh, characters that you can trust will be there to help you out well, when you need it. Well, and the thing also specifically about Wentworth and the fans is that, and we've been doing this on Talking Teal, this is kind of what Talking Teal has been about, is analyzing and trying to get ahead of the story and try to figure out where it goes. And once you know that everything is just a plot device to advance a specific story that the writers a had specific set character. In, yes. Since everything is being sacrificed for that story, then it doesn't even matter what happens to your characters because everything that happens to them all leads to the same place. And it's not a it's good not story. About them. It's not even a good story. <laughs> yeah. It's not even a character that we want to see go Trials. somewhere. Exactly. Um, and now not only the Mike, Mike Iman, Frankie story was all uh, just for that purpose as well and was completely wasted, but also her escape story. We've been seeing her try to plan her escape for, for weeks now. And now she doesn't need to. Guess what? She knows the re she knows the reason she's in there. She knows who killed uh, Panisi. She knows why she's uh, why Iman uh, framed her. So now all of this time for her planning her escape was also completely wasted. And to me, one of the very saddest things about all of this is um, B was sacrificed for nothing. Right. So unless Ferguson actually dies in the end, and that will somehow you yes, know be but... a, a reward. Um, but I, I keep, I keep thinking, you know, if, if Ferguson dies in the end, I will be like the B fans from last season. I know she's not dead. And it's not yes, because for a different reason, exactly, not because I actually want to be alive. Not because you don't want because, to believe it because it's I, because you can't believe exactly. it. Exactly. Um, but, uh, no, but anyway, to me, that's the, the, the worst part of everything is that B was sacrificed to no yeah. end. Yeah. I mean. And, and and this entire last two seasons have been sacrificed uh, for the same reason, along with B. And I don't think that there's anything that they can do in the last two episodes that could redeem this season. They could they could make it up to us a yeah, little bit. Yeah, they can bit. kill Ferguson. They can kill Ferguson. That would be great. But they still wasted a whole season on it, which was completely uncalled for. We could have had a great season moving along with new stories, new plot lines, new characters. And instead, we, we wasted another season. You know, we had a season of moments. But this is uh, 12 episode, hour-long episodes. Of packed to have, with story, usually. And, and what we end up with is a season of moments yeah. that we liked. Yeah. Um, now, also, the problem is now that Ferguson holds the key to Frankie's freedom. We know she's not going to tell. We know that even if she dies, she takes the truth with her. So Frankie's basically fucked coming and going. Um, and Jen said, um, she put it very well, 
The worst part is, I'd love nothing more than to see the freak die, but now we have a bigger problem. Frankie is framed for two murders, and the only one who knows the truth is the freak. Jake knows about Iman, but not the connection to Panisi. I don't see a way out of this for Frankie, and it's making me really sad and angry. I'm starting to resent this show. The only thing that may be good is that, uh, you know, um, Bridget will hire a detective who will find, because she knows this <laughs> connection. She knows this, con she knows of this connection between yes. them. Uh, and if I may say, that's another thing. And, and J Jolene said, uh, if Bridget had hired that, if, if Frankie had let Bridget hire that PI a long time ago, we could have prevented all of this. Yeah. And the thing is, is yes, of course, but then it wouldn't have been drama. But it would have been drama. It would have been a different drama. A, a different drama, and also, it just it was the thing that made the more sense, the most sense at the time to do. Everything that Frankie did to push Bridget away, and then use her, and then almost implicate her in things, and you know, all while supposedly protecting her. I mean, uh, Bridget hiring a PI would not in any way endanger her job or her uh, no. life. But Frankie was doing all this stuff to protect her while, while not protecting endangering her. endangering her job, her career, exactly. her so, reputation. So the alternative that they gave for the PI story, which maybe would have solved things earlier and they wanted more drama, the, the, the reasoning that they had behind it was utter bullshit. That's what makes me crazy. Um, and also we hear in the preview for next episode that uh, Frankie says, you know, Kaz has a plan to take Ferguson down, and Frankie says... You're going to try to take her down, she'll only rise again. Well, then what's the fucking point? But she she absolutely stated the theme of the last three years. Exactly. Um, all right, so as we say, there were a lot of problems with the Iman, uh, um, Mike, Frankie story, but... Now I'm going to have to ruin your three favorite scenes. Because you're all saying, even though all of this was happening, at least we got the Frankie and Boomer, Frankie and Bridget, Frankie and Kim. So, let me tell you why I didn't like those Frankie, scenes either. Yeah. No, because they finally patched things up. But, hold on. So, let's start with Frankie and Bridget. Uh, really? All has been forgotten and forgiven in a drop of a hat just because Frankie asks for a favor? Everything she did, I, I wouldn't have forgiven her so easily. Well, uh, Bridget said exactly why there's no real hope for them in her line about uh, when, and when Frankie said, well, maybe we can, you know, have this and you'll come visit me. And, and she oh, said, and she how said, could I, 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 I can't, after everything, after we, everything had. we had, I can't well, accept but, this. Exactly. And that, that was the truth. Well, she said that, I, I guess, in terms of, just visiting you in the visitor's room instead of living with you and having a life with you. Yes, I, I, but but to me, it's also after everything she did to her. I mean, she was she was she lied to her repeatedly. She put her at risk. She she used her. Yes, but I think she's talking about everything they had. That there's no way that this is any kind of a substitute of any yeah. kind. Yeah. Um, uh, not only that, and that um, it won't happen. Not only that, but she's then asking her to do another, another thing, thing that would put her in mm -hmm. her career in jeopardy anyway. Um, several, of you, several of you also pointed out, so Bridget is now visiting Frankie twice in a row, and they don't care that people know now that they're together? Well, because I don't it's, think they care, because she doesn't work there. What no, difference no, does it because make? Because it's still an, an ethical breach. She was, she was involved with her while she was... Uh, working well, in the prison. Knew that. I don't. I don't think that's. Uh, yes, but they cared. Frankie cared so much to protect her that nobody knows. I mean, it's just such bullshit. They just. They just adjust the story to what they need it to be. Well, they don't have much physical contact or anything. It doesn't matter. She could just be visiting the psychologist. Her as a psychologist. Oh come on, <laughs> really? Uh, but anyway, speaking of Frigid, I forgot that there was actually somebody else in the prison who knew about Frigid, Kim. Now. You were all so proud of Frankie for patching things up with Kim. Uh, you know that they're, they're she now. She patched it up with him. She needed not, something. Exactly. Her. She's been in prison for weeks and weeks and weeks now. Why does she come to her now? Because she needs something. For her. This is really, really, really. This episode to me was Frankie the user. Exactly. More than anything. Um, uh, Jane said, "Oh, that just shows that she hasn't regressed to her old self. She's coming. She's trying to be good to her." Just because she needs, needs something from her. Um, now, also, uh, Jolene 
said, I, I miss this completely, that before Frankie walks in on her, Kim is uh, looking at her scars. And I forgot, remember when Kim, when she got high after Frankie and Bridget, after Frankie left her, and she climbed on the wall and she got stuck in that oh, razor right. wire? Oh, God. So I don't think, personally, that Kim has forgiven Frankie that easily just because Frankie, you know, batted no, her eyelashes. I don't eyelashes. think she forgave her. I think she gave her a chance. I think she threw I, her bone. I disagree. This is Tina's phone. And she didn't give it to her immediately. She came afterwards and said, here's the phone. Tina, Ferguson... I don't, I think this will come back at Frankie somehow. I don't think she's forgiven her. Um, but you know what? Even if it doesn't come back at her, even if Kim was truly, genuinely forgiving, I say fuck Frankie. That was a completely, that made me disrespect her that because she only went to her because she needed her. I don't think she forgave her. I think that as one prisoner to another prisoner, and it's, she decided to help her out. Well, I personally disagree, but we'll find out. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, this leads me to Frankie and Boomer. Now, all of you loved that scene. I loved it for Boomer. I loved Boomer taking a stand. Asserting herself. Yes, saying, you know, don't fuck this up for me. I finally feel special. But you know what, people? Frankie has been so condescending to Boomer. And especially seeing what, what Boomer can be like when somebody treats her as an equal, which is Sonia and how, how she blossoms and how wonderful she is. Frankie says to her, oh, I've neglected you this season. Oh. I've neglected you? What is she, a puppy that needs your attention? She is, she is a person. She's been a good friend to you all these years, and she missed you, and you're, you know, you treat her like this. She really looks down on her, and I, that really put me off. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, also, some of you are thinking that, that she really expressed authentically that you know, her, her response to Boomer on her face, you could see that now she's not going to try to fuck up her workshop by escaping. Well, guess what? If she doesn't escape, it's because she doesn't need to exactly. anymore. It's not because she's going to, you know, not do but it she for cares Boomer. she cares that it's going to hurt Boomer. No. She already let Boomer, uh, as uh, uh, Kathy reminded us, she already let uh, B burn her hands down and she just stood there and didn't do a thing. So she, she would do that again. Um... This is, in fact, this was one episode where I really, really didn't respect Frankie for all of these. All of these reasons that you loved her, I didn't. Um, but um, Jolene is trying to throw Frankie a bone and say that she's only, she, the reason that she's been prefer, preferring Allie this, this season, this time around in prison, uh, and not Boomer, is because Allie is new and she doesn't know the old Frankie and it allowed her to, to you know, like start a new chapter and not feel like she's regressing to her old self. Who, who, who said this? Jolene. And this is how Jolene feels? Yeah, Jolene thinks that oh. the reason that Frankie has been, you know, neglecting Boomer and choosing to be with Allie instead is because... She's choosing to be with Allie because she thinks Allie can help her escape. Yes. That, there's no, nothing personal about it. And, and anyway, she can choose to be with Allie more and cooperate with her and collaborate with her while still being nice to Boomer and giving her some of her time. And it's not an excuse to the way that she's behaving. The, the excuse to the way that she's behaving is that she knows that she's back in prison for nothing. Now, mind you, she has done things that would have put her back in prison anyway, mm -hmm. uh, parole-wise. Mm -hmm. But she is obsessed with righting the wrong and getting out of prison. That's and fine. I can understand that. She would not be... I don't think she can be the Frankie that we care about while she has this obsession. That's I, fine. But she goes around using people yes, and hurting them absolutely. and treating them like shit. Absolutely. She has and only one goal in mind and that goal is to get out of prison for frankie this whole season is about proving herself innocent getting out of prison that is all she cares about she doesn't care about anybody personally it is clouding her every judgment every emotion uh she isn't the frankie we knew because she isn't the frankie we knew mm -hmm. she's a frankie with one obsession and an obsession uh, trumps everything with people. Well, and it's also an obsession that I can understand. I don't forgive her for, for not being, for using, for being a user. But I understand from her, from the pathology of, of an obsession, of being thrown. Imagine what it was like for her. She was free. And now she's back in prison for something she didn't do. And I understand how that sort of trumps everything. I don't like it. 
I don't like her very much for it, but I understand it. Well, the thing, the thing that I don't like about it, I understand what you're saying, and I think you're right, um, and I, absolutely. But I think that the story of all of that, the story of trying to figure it out, trying to get out of the prison, that has been so unsatisfying too. I'm not talking about Frankie, I'm talking about the writing. Mm -hmm. um, there needs to be some sort of a balance. If, if, if your characters are behaving differently and if the storyline doesn't work with the character and if the storyline leads all to one thing, it just leaves you frustrated from every direction. Right. Um, because not only the system screws over your favorite people, your favorite people screw over one another. And it... There isn't much to like this there season, isn't much let's to like. face it. Unless you are obsessed again with Joan. Yeah. Unless, unless you're a huge unless Joan fan. You're just you don't care what Joan does, you don't care how bad she is. You love the great Pamela Rabe so much that uh you're blinded to the flaws of the storyline just so you can have your Pamela, your uh you know, front and center. Otherwise, there's nothing to like this season. And actually, uh, since you're mentioning it, um, Elizabeth or Liz, I'm not sure which way you prefer to be called. Let me know what next time you write. She says, I see people getting into arguments saying Ferguson makes the show and it would and it would die without her. And I have to ask them why. Why would the show die without her? It existed long before she came in and it can certainly exist after. At this point, I would take anyone over Ferguson as the villain. And I mean anyone, anyone at all. A show shouldn't keep delivering blow after blow to the audience without some reprieve, and I hate that they are doing this. My only hope is that in the last two episodes we get some kind of payoff, and, it, and if we do, it had better be fucking epic. <laughs> Bravo, Liz Elizabeth. I now, <laughs> absolutely agree with you 100%. Now, speaking of uh, there hasn't been a lot, uh, there hasn't been much in this season, da, 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 there hasn't also been much of Allie. And I think at this point, after 10 episodes, I think it's pretty safe to declare this episode, the, the, pre, the preview, the trailer to the season, the posters to the season, they were pretty much a deception. Mm -hmm. Allie was the, post, the literal poster, the poster child. <laughs> and everything was about revenge will set them free. Well, hmm, you, that's, not a theme for the, that's not a theme for the last five minutes of the season finale. That no. should, should have been the theme for the entire season. Exactly. Where they, a build-up. To and, this revenge. And you know, I said the, the first episode of Talking Teal this season, because all of you made a huge effort, I know, to get into this season after B was killed. And I know for a lot of you that was that took that took a lot of effort and patience and willingness to, to go along with the story. And I said, you know, B's not gone. She's gonna be in this season every second because every second is gonna be devoted to avenging her death. Where's that been? Hmm. I don't remember us seeing was, uh, that for a while. Yeah, we Besides saw the first scene. ninja, ninja, the ninja and trying to give her the hot shot. That was That's it. it. That was it. Now, uh, I just lost my train of thought. Another thing that I, I am uh, disappointed in is the build-up of Sonia. To Sonia. Wait a second. Okay. I have something to say about Sonia. Before okay. we get to Sonia, just remember that, okay? Okay, remember what I'll, you try, to say. I'll try. <laughs> I just want to say about Allie, uh, I want to quote two of you. Daria, I still can't believe how small of a storyline Allie has had this season. And Rachel, Allie only appears in this episode to, to um, con continue with the gold jokes, goldfish and goldilocks. It's, to me, it's outrageous, after, especially after the Bally storyline and how wonderfully it beloved it was. So beautifully written and performed and, and, and executed. And, and uh, so satisfying to the fans until the end, which we were all... Yes. Know. And again, why did B die? We at least should have had Allie front and center trying to avenge her death instead of shuttled off to the side as, as, as Frankie's sidekick. Yes. You know, she did do have two efforts, but nothing should stop her. And she has had no storyline of her of own. Her own she has no. been a proxy to other people. She's been facilitating a other people's plots. Exactly. But she's had no said. story of her own. And um, especially since you, we had, last year we said, you know, we're not just mourning the death of B, we're mourning losing this beautiful relationship. relationship. And so not only you kill B, you, you essentially kill the relationship, but then you also push Allie aside and... For Ferguson. And Allie, in season four, was a, a favorite new character. We all loved her. She had so much moxie. She had so much personality. 
And then why waste that? Why? Is there any good reason to waste Allie this season? I just can't see it. Well, because you have to push everything that has to do with Ferguson Ugh. front and center. And also, Frankie has had uh, a, a lot of air time and a lot of story Which also, time. all of her story led where? It ends in Ferguson. <laughs> Even though we said, please don't let the Mike Panisi story be connected to Ferguson. Please don't let her be behind us. No, she wasn't behind she wasn't us. Behind She's at the it. end of it. Yeah. Okay, now let's go to the other bullshit, sto bullshit storyline this uh, episode. Vera, Jake, and Channing. So... The drug dealer comes to Vera's house. Yeah, he threatens yeah, her. Yeah. He's a scary guy. Jay comes in. Oh, he's just a loan shark. Oh, all right then. You know, after <laughs> after Will has been pounding this in her head, she has known. I know, I know she's thinking with her vagina. Uh, but still and all, Vera is smarter than this. Will told her about him. This man comes and says, I, I mean... Vera, you deserve everything that happens That's to you. That's exactly what Elizabeth slash Liz just said. Hey, everything Elizabeth coming in Liz, her way. You and I are on the same page, honey. We are there. And the thing is, why do that to her? Why do that to us? She has had such a strong start. I was, I, I had full faith in her at the beginning of the season. And then what? Well, I knew it wasn't going to be easy, but I felt no, that she would easy. overcome it. She uh, was at least going in the right direction. She was trying. Uh... And, you know, as you said she's thinking with her vagina. Uh, Kate Atkinson had a, a, an interrogation room. And I liked what she said about this. She, I mean, not about this specifically, but about the whole relationship. Mm -hmm. She said um, that more than she's in love, I mean, if I, if I can paraphrase on what I inter interpreted, more than she's in love with Jake, she's in love with the idea of having what everybody else has. Of course, because she's had such a lonely life. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's not even that she's thinking with her vagina. Um, no, she wants to hang on to this, um, to this illusion this of normalcy. This fairy tale yes. that, that she uh, thinks she's living. Right. Um, but and I, she deserves to lose her job. And I think um, that Jake, because this, this episode, uh, some of you, including me, um, saw this, you know, he went to uh, the drug dealer and he said, don't ever come near her again. And he told her, no, I really he cares care about, about you. Her. And I thought to myself, Jesus, he really, did he, did he really come to care about her? But I think we know that Jake first and foremost cares about Jake. Uh, I think that Jake, similarly to Vera, I don't think he really loves her. I think he also has come to like this, this thing that he has now. He has a woman who adores him She's pretty much the only person who looks in his eyes and doesn't reflect the weasel that he is, but reflects this really great guy. You know, I think he also likes the idea yes, of it. But I think he, that he does her. care about her, but he doesn't care about her enough to... Exactly. You exactly. know, to support her. Exactly. Or to, or to stop doing anything, right. to try to help her out, or well, to try to protect her. Because Joan has him by the balls. Like she has everyone. Right. By the short hairs. Well... And she's, of course, running the prison by proxy because she also controls Channing and she's, she controls everybody. So now Channing takes over, uh, being the governor, and um, you have several theories as to what this could lead to or what his motive might be. Um, some of you think that he's just doing it so that he could oversee the drug business that he's now part of. Some of you think that, think that maybe he wants to take the freak down and he wants Jake to help him. Some of you think that maybe he wants to take Jake and the freak down. Um, Lauren said... I don't think so. Not one bit. I don't think so either. Um, uh, all Channing cares about is himself. He's another one. All these people care about are themselves. Uh, Lauren says also maybe now that Channing is there, Jake will feel that he's a little more empowered now that he's dealing with Channing, that he can get out from under Ferguson. Uh, Jane said maybe Jake realizes that... Uh, Ferguson will need him less and less now because Vera is not no longer the governor and uh, that instead of waiting for her to throw him to the curb or under the bus, he will do something instead. Uh, he will somehow... He's an angry squirrel. Uh, yeah, no. um, also, Jen says... Um, get there. Um, the whole storyline of Jake and Channing leaves me with a really bad taste in my mouth and I can't quite put into words why. I think it has something to do with two slimy men making a deal to take down a woman and, and screw over a bunch of other women. Also, it feels like 90% of the staff is corrupt in some way or another. And that's pretty ridiculous margin of bad guys to good guys. I'll say, yeah. Um, 
to me, the, the most offensive thing about this is that no matter what happens with Channing, it doesn't even matter. We know that everything that happens with him is simply a plot device to facilitate the storyline that Joan, that they want to see Joan go through. So that's what I feel is really stupid and, and really offensive. That I don't even, all right, Channing is now the governor. Why? Oh, that's easy, because somehow it will serve the Joan storyline. Everything, that's the answer to everything boils down to that. And that's what I find most offensive. And it takes the person that that had some heart, that actually cared about the women, it takes her out of out of the game. Well, so actually, again, there's nowhere to turn. Actually, Sarah said that she's hoping that now that Vera has been demoted, first of all, she'll be angry. And secondly, she will not be constri constricted by her job and responsibilities as governor, so she'll be able to finally Maybe. do something. Well, that would be good. Also, we know that Allie knows the truth about Channing, so she might be able to somehow mm -hmm. come in there and do something. They sure are reminding us on every turn that she knows the truth about Channing. Um, but again, it's just, we know it all leads to Ferguson one way or another, and we've already wasted the entire season on that story. So I'm, at this point, I'm just rolling my eyes on every turn. Um, let's talk about my one bright spot in this episode, Will and Kaz. Uh, yeah, Will and Kaz. I love their relationship. Um, as Sarah said uh, in her email, besides Boomer, Kaz is the only character who actually had some growth this season. And who really cares about people. Yes. She's selfless. She really is. And uh, I think that uh, if they had to go through a death-defying experience to get there at least there's something with a cause and effect that was very um a powerful and rewarding yes in fact um i don't remember who it was but i think at some point I'm, I'm about to read that paragraph but somebody said that was the only good thing about the season that was the only episode where I, where we felt involved we mm -hmm. felt that we, i mean because it was about these two characters who so far have not been compromised and something actually happened between mm -hmm. them. Something happened, we were, we were so involved, and then something happened as a result, and it had nothing to do with Ferguson. I mean, of course, to an extent, it will, but in that moment, it didn't. Mm -hmm. So that was the one rewarding thing this season. But you know, the things, you know things are really, really bad when even Will doesn't believe in the justice system anymore. <laughs> when, he, when even he says uh, Will should, he's uh, done with it. Will should have come to that conclusion a while ago. Oh, but I, that's what I love about him. That yes, he was a believer. He was, he was, believer, was an idealist. Exactly. Um, and, and that's the only thing that will actually still keep him in the game because... He, he will listen to Kaz, who tells him the women need you and all that stuff, because he's a believer mm -hmm. that he can really make a change uh, and that the system should be different. Mm -hmm. um, so the question now is, are they actually going to be the saviors, Will and, Ka will and Kaz? Or, you know... Are they going to be another uh, well, victim? We just saw in this episode Ferguson pass by Will and say, oh, what are you still doing here? Well, excuse me, where did that the fuck come from? She's been there all these weeks. She hasn't said a word to him. And all of a sudden, she's interested in him again? No, because she thought she had it all fixed up for him to be... Uh, she knew he went after Jake. Uh, and that they pr that they managed to... But she says it to him pretty crawl, early on in the episode. Crawl right out from under that. Uh, and uh, I think uh, that's what she meant by that. Yes, I know what she meant by that. But to me, it's like, so now you're throwing it all season long. We don't see any interaction between them. And all of a sudden, she's also already, all of a sudden, she is again interested in him. So now he is going to somehow be pulled into her storyline. And be, uh, uh, she just keeps pulling everybody into her storyline. And I'm tired of it. But how do you really feel? <sighs> how do I really feel? Well, let's talk about Liz and Sonia That's what now. usually people say to me. I know. Liz and Sonia, um, they better not ruin Sonia for me. I was going to say that uh, they gave Sonia a huge build-up, made her extremely scary, threatening, uh, and right now she's uh, maybe she's going to have maybe she has a plan for the for the last couple of episodes, but to me she's pretty toothless right now. Well, then you mean they built her up against the freak? They just built her up to be a good, smart, powerful. Uh, Rival, right, and, uh, and she fizzled out to the side. Yeah, now she's you know playing with her uh, playing planters. With Liz. And, well, and playing I don't. With Liz. I understand her playing with Liz because no, but uh, she, I think that this is just part of her fun. She said she 
set Liz up. Liz took the bait, and um, I think she, because she betrayed her, she's... Yes, but this, she's, but this last thing about trying to get her to drink and about tormenting her... Yes, uh, she's a cat with a mouse. Yeah, but Sarah said something, and I, because I felt very uncomfortable with that scene. And, and, so did I. And, and Sarah made me realize why. This is Ferguson type stuff to do. Exactly. This is, and I don't want Sonia to be in any no. way Ferguson. I wanted to be more straightforward in her uh, actions. Yes. And if she play, if she's playing with her for fun, this no, I think this she's playing seem... with her for uh, revenge. But, but again, she did exactly time. what she wanted her to do. Well, exactly, but she she did. But she could have not. Yes, but that but it worked in her favor for her to do I that. I understand, but she still, in her mind, betrayed her. Well, then play with her, but you don't need revenge. I, she didn't do anything to you. She's in prison now. She'll probably I be in agree. prison for 15 more years for perjury because I of what agree. you... I agree. I agree. I don't like it. Uh, now, you know, you're trying... It's you, not what I want to see from her. And so if we don't think that she just is playing with her at this point for fun or, or to this extent for fun, then we're trying to find out what her motivation mm -hmm. is. So, um, Jolene said maybe because she was worried about her committal hearing, she just needed a little bit of a distraction. She, so that was, that's what it was for. Why is it called a committal hearing? I don't know. That's She's not being committed. I don't know. Jane, you want to answer? I yes, know. Jane. Could you please say why it's not just her hearing, uh, just her trial, just whatever it is? Uh, is it her sentencing because they know she's uh, guilty? Maybe I don't that's... think it's the sentencing. Okay, I don't well, think it's the sentencing well, what, Why is it called a committal hearing? Dear and, Jane. Anyway, I I think the only reason that I would accept this uh, and not be terribly angry of, uh, that they're ruining my Sonia is if she's trying to further discredit her as a witness in case they call upon her. If this investigation into Don's disappearance uh, leads them to think or le leads them to realize that Don and Liz, because they're already thinking it, Don and Liz had uh, uh, Colluded. A, a fishy mm -hmm. yes a relationship there. Uh, if that somehow, if she's worried that that somehow will lead them to uh, the connection between Don and Sonia and all of that stuff, I can that I can see. If she if she anticipated that right after their conversation, Liz would run to Vera and Vera would tell her, you know, that sounds awfully familiar. That's what you said last time. Do you really want to get yourself involved? Which is what in happened, wasn't exactly. it? Exactly. Yeah. If she thought, you know what, this is what's going to happen. Maybe you mean she just wanted to discredit her first. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that in Possible. case they come back to her in relation to her, because mm -hmm. we know that she had just. Knew, she just learned that they were going to do the committal hearing. She thought, let's further discredit her as a witness. That, that, that's a, whose idea was that? Yours? Mine. Very good. <laughs> My smart wife. Thank you. Um, because I, I can live with that. I, that's the only way that I pretty much can live with that. Um, but uh, Sarah is making a good point, which is, why didn't just Liz tell her, no, I'm an alcoholic, I can't drink? More to the point, how did Sonia not know this with all those nights passing around the shampoo bottle? Well, I think she didn't, didn't know it. Didn't know. I think so, too, but the whole behavior was as if she wasn't supposed to know of it because Liz was I like, think oh. the so I think the whole behavior was to show us that she did know so, about it. From Sonia's point yes. of view. But from Liz's point of view, she should have just said, well, you know I'm an alcoholic, so I can't drink. Well, they have to keep Liz dumb. Well, that doesn't work for me. She's not no, that dumb. I know, but she's been behaving pretty dumb. Oh, that's, that's, then that's, again, stupid and lazy writing. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yes, I love, you, love guys. you guys. I'm just, I don't, I'm we trying to writers. understand why this is happening. <sighs> um, but anyway, um, I'm just, I'm just so grateful that she threw it up because. That was excellent. Because I just, I don't know, not another Liz is going down the rabbit hole with her alcoholism storyline. I can't take another one of those. So at least they didn't go that way. Um, Lauren says, by the way, I didn't notice it, but after she threw up the alcohol, there's the, an image of a, a spider on a web. And maybe it's a reference to uh -huh. how Liz is in Sonia's mm -hmm. web. Um, so, next week. So, at the end of this episode, we see Ferguson saying everything is moving according to plan. Now, if memory serves, she also said that sometime in season four. And the plan didn't work out as, well, as she thought the plan it doesn't did, work so. out again. Yes. And certainly, again, Frankie and Iman had nothing to do with the plan. Well, that Frankie and Iman maybe was seren a serendipitous way for... Exactly. It wasn't really calculated. It was a serendipitous way for, for Ferguson to do something else to take Vera down. But she obviously didn't have a plan. She was waiting for an opportunity. So uh, it's bullshit. 
Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, it all leads to that. It all leads to bullshit. Yes. Um, now, Lauren uh, uh, provided a, a definition of coup de gras, which is the episode, the title of the uh, next episode. Uh, and also, he Ferguson says at the end of this episode that all that's left is the coup de gras. So, thanks to Google, um, here is the def definition of coup de gras. Mercy killing, the act of putting it to death a person or animal who is severely injured and unlikely to recover. It's usually a bullfighting thing. Or the final the event through its Or the final event that causes a figurative death. So it was borrowed from the literal meaning uh -huh. to mean that. Um, now we see in the preview that Kaz has a plan to take Ferguson down. Did and I she... use that word wrong in something we talked about yesterday? You use I have to think wrong. of uh, the phrase. I have to think of uh, what phrase I was looking for. Oh, okay. This is just an, an aside, people. Um, so Kaz is, has a plan. She needs all the girls to cooperate, including Allie and Frankie. Um, now, Jane sent me a message because Jane is my little hamster. You know, she's not, she's, she's one step ahead of the rat. She's a hamster. She only provides me with spoilers that I should know about. Thank you, Jane. And she tells me, she tells me that there is uh, this article that came out. Uh, there have been a couple of um, references to next week's, ep uh, well, actually, two, the two upcoming episodes uh, is electric and explosive, or something that has to do with explosive. Haven't we heard explosive before? Well, now Channing made a, a joke uh, when when Ferguson talks in and makes his jokes, and he says at least the at least the prison is not isn't on that, fire. Isn't burning down, right? So yeah. I don't know if they're gonna go for yet another fire. Seems a little repetitive. Or an explosion. Or an explosion, or maybe something with the electrical something or other, which will shut down the prison, and uh, or or as Jane said, maybe a major escape of everybody, sort of maybe going back to Orange is the New Black when they just went to the lake. <laughs> So, I don't know, but here's a, here are a few crazy theories. You're going to love Betty's crazy theory. Okay. And, and I mean loving and you're going to puke, okay? Oh, <laughs> I'd rather love it. Joan's main goal, sorry, fly over. Oh, it's all right. They can hardly hear that. Joan's main goal is to kill the White Queen, Vera. And that motivation... I mean, Joan, jo oh, yeah, yeah. Yes, and that motivation, I think, is driven by her lust. There will be a kiss between them eventually. Oh. Hopefully at the end of the series as Vera stabs her in the gut after getting a recorded confession out of her for all the diabolical things she's done. Now the kiss would be like <laughs> a godfather kiss where he kisses the people that he's about to kill. All right, that's that's Betty's crazy theory. The uh, kiss before dying. The, or the, the kiss of death. Um, Jen has two different things that she's thinking. Kaz's, uh, her hope and theory for Kaz's plan is that she was talking about, uh, that she was, um, wait a second, my theory or hope is that Kaz's plan that she was talking about involves her luring the freak into a fight to distract her, but then Kaz's crew is ready with weapons to attack Ferguson together and kill her, and if any of that is remotely accurate, I'd like to see Allie do the honors of finally ending the freak. That coup de gras. That's not a mercy killing, that's a revenge killing. She's also thinking, what is Ferguson's endgame? I know psychopaths have a very strong self-preservation instinct, so I don't see her having a, a death wish, but despite that, what if the final goal is to goad Frankie into killing her, just like Jax did to be, so regardless of whether she's innocent of the other murders, she spends the rest of her life in prison, the ultimate revenge by the freak. I don't as long as she doesn't... Oh, for Frankie, yes. Yeah, I don't, I don't see why the freak would have that much against Frankie. No. Um, if anything, maybe she would have had to try to get Vera to kill her, so that Vera would end up in Wentworth, exactly. which is not entirely that that outrageous. Exactly, that would make sense. But then, I, again, going back to the psychopaths and their, their self-preservation, I don't know why Ferguson would want... To she doesn't die want to die when she still wants when she still thinks she deserves to go go back to be the governor the governor so I don't see that I would see it interesting I would think it was would be interesting if Vera does end up killing the freak landing herself at Wentworth but I would hate it I mean I would think unless that it, it were self defense and she doesn't yeah, yeah self defense end up I don't back. think Vera and is. she doesn't end back up in prison she well, just kills well. the freak as would be wonderful but I still think it's Allie that should who should kill the freak and do it in self-defense so that it doesn't add anything to her um, sentence. All right. Um, Kathy thinks that um, the freak is going down. She seems pretty confident. Who's going to come out as top dog? Kaz, because season five will end with Frankie and Allie on the run. All right. 
Um, so those are your crazy theories, but I do have to, just, just for fun, read to you some of the fabulous, um, uh, your, some of your fabulous responses to this episode, okay? There were some very hilarious things that were said. Okay, so Liz slash Elizabeth, which hopefully by next episode of Talking to I will not have to say oh, that. No. Two, uh, two words sum up this week's episode for me, and they are dog's balls. <laughs> <laughs> now what's wrong with dog's balls? Plenty. Dogs need those balls <laughs> to procreate. And that's a lot, coming from a person who, who bugs the crap out of everyone I work with to watch the show and discuss it afterwards, who calls Tuesday nights Wentworth night. I am finding the season to have skirted on the precipice of becoming total cod's wallop, and I wonder. I like that. I've never heard it, but I like it. And I wonder why. Why give us a season where all the characters become complete opposites of who we knew them, who we knew they were? So um, this is Liz or Elizabeth, Jen. So I'm at a work conference this week, and let me tell you, I probably looked a little cray cray yesterday morning as I ran around the resort trying to find a spot with a decent enough Wi-Fi connection so I could watch the episode. It was a nightmare, but I finally got to see it, and then I kind of regretted that I did. But it was a worse, <laughs> then it was a worse nightmare. Um, Rachel, it's official. The writers have ruined this show. The cast is still incredible, and we've seen we've seen some amazing performances, but the story has truly gone off the rails. I understand that it's drama, and reality will sometimes be stretched. But they have thrown any semblance of reality out the window. The only hope I have left is that the final episode will reveal that Joan lost her mind after she killed B, and all of this nonsense has happened only in her mind. In other words, we'll find her in her very scrubbed down showers. Shower. <laughs> like, With Bobby Huey. Oh, <laughs> Hello, it Bobby. Was all a dream. <laughs> okay, Lauren. I must say that I'm not that I'm not as excited each week when Wentworth rolls around. Of course, I'm definitely interested in each character, but the pool is I used to feel has worn off somewhat. My favorite was Daria's. I didn't mind this episode. <laughs> Call about damning. That's called damning with faint praise. This episode didn't make me want to vomit. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the faint praise. Huh? All right, favorite quotes. Chatting to Ferguson. Well, at least it's not on fire. Meaning the prison. Cast to will, call me a radical feminist skeptic. I've called you worse. I remember. <laughs> Boomer to Frankie, for once I feel special. Uh, Vera to Jake. I had a visit from a man called Turk. I don't think he was Turkish. <laughs> which was, was not funny. supposed to be funny, but it was funny. I, I think it was supposed to be funny. You think? Because she was scared at that point. Yes, but she was, you know, yeah. saying... Uh, the next lines between Will and Kaz, Kaz to Will, you, fa you sound like me, want to join the red right hand? Will to Kaz, in your view of the world, the right people get punished. And finally, Kaz to Will, I need to know that there is at least one good guy on the other side of these bars. That was my favorite episode, my favorite part of this episode. Um, and Bridget to Frankie, I wish I could say no, which was a great line. Mm -hmm. So this was episode 10. <laughs> I, I told you that this talking to you would be a little different for me, the other ones. Um, we kept giving and giving and giving the benefit of the doubt and allowing for all these things, but this is, no, this is the, as the you end said of earlier, life. they they jumped the shark with this uh, episode, yeah. especially with uh, Jones killing of Iman. That was jumping the shark to yeah. me. Yeah. That was the moment when it it went into unreality. Yeah, especially since when she when we find out everything that had happened. It was all, I mean, okay, now we know. And then, wait a second, now she's dead. Okay, well, that was, that sure was, whoop, uh, premature ejaculation, kind of. Um, so, we have two episodes left. Uh, I know they're supposed to be electric and explosive and all that stuff. Um, so, let's hope we have something to chew on, like Allie and Frankie had. Uh, I, I, I think the, the thing about... Um, the season is that there's a lot of sound and fury signifying nothing. We have uh, we have a lot of build up to things, and having her father come and doing the plumbing, and then Joan takes a shower. Uh, <laughs> then Joan takes a shower. That's it. Uh, <laughs> well, then they know, go to the kitchen. They doing the kitchen. working uh, in the all of this the intrigue about the, the, workshop. Uh, the workshop. Now she doesn't have reason to escape no, anyway. She doesn't have reason to escape. And Boomer finds out. And, Unless and that's that. the only the only reason that Frankie would have to escape is if at this point she feels like there's no, there's hope, no hope for, for her, her to ever exactly. be able to exonerate uh, herself 
And so she decides, well, I'm just going to live on the run. Yes, but uh, again, all of the stuff with uh, uh, Mike and what's her name, uh, Sonia, Sonia. And the Don thing. He's still alive. Well, that got her. Well, into and prison. also for a minute there, yeah. it, it really um, it seemed as if Sonia and Ferguson were going to get were going to go head to head, and then Sonia just lets her use the, the workshop for drugs, and that that led to nowhere either. And so, uh, unless you know, she's. She's uh, lulling. She's, yeah, she's letting her think that there's a, you know this calm before a storm. Uh, she's lulling her into um, a false sense of security. Uh, also, uh, oh, I had a couple of other things I'm that sorry. were big buildups uh, of things that went absolutely Vera, nowhere. Liz, Kaz. Well, you know, uh, no. So far, the Kaz will thing uh, is it was a good payoff. Well, and, and, but, and uh, maybe now Allie's is... two attempts on Allie's. Joan. Allie's whole storyline. Uh, uh, the thing I'm hoping about Kaz and Will is that Kaz has a plan that would involve him and he could help from the other side of the bars. Just like Ferguson has Jay, Kaz will have Will, hopefully. Yes, uh, but again, and also your major one, which is all of this stuff about Mike Panisi yeah. ending in nothing. Yeah. And plus, I did think that it was, okay, it was a crime of passion. All right. But then... If she wanted to frame Frankie, it would have helped her out to leave the photos on the board rather than take them down. And then if she got Frankie framed, then why bother going after her to prison? I mean, it's just so, it's so outrageously crazy. So... Yes, again. Everything, yes. everything was, was, everything, reality, the characters, everything has been compromised to beyond the beyond the the expectations that they should have that we would suspend our disbelief all to serve the plot of a person of a character we can't, can't stand, stand looking at anymore at, exactly. and who killed the major character the main lead one of the most favorite character from last and who it turns out died for no reason right and nothing has been advanced there's been no advancement of plot because of it no so let's see what happens in the next two episodes. Let's see if there at least going to be some satisfaction. Um, the next talking to you will be Sunday, June eighteenth. Uh, your email deadline will be Saturday, June seventeenth at um, noon EST. Um, and uh, again, I'm hoping that you're working on your your party contributions. Um, and uh, you know, there are only two weeks left. So if don't miss out on the opportunity to tell us all that's on your mind. Okay? I hope it's not going to be a wake instead of a party. <laughs> yeah, well, that's kind of what happened last year, but we still managed yes. to do it. Um, it was a wake for a character we loved, but not a wake for a season. Oh, oh, that's what you mean. Yeah. Yes, I don't mean for a dead, uh, for dead characters. Yes. Though there will be a dead character, I'm sure. Yes, of it. we'll see if it's the right one. <laughs> Thanks for joining us as always to see to hear us bitching, <laughs> and uh, we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.